Um, right, so right now we're talking about warm-up exercises and principles behind them. Um, now, this, th I w when I was looking through the, the prospectus a few weeks ago, I was noticing that warm-up exercises and principles behind them can go together with understanding, identifying, and teaching vocal craft. We can put those two things together. In my course, what we do, we don't do vocal warm-ups. We do, um, we do um, voice education. And so we blend together our vocal warm-ups with teaching the craft of barbershop and the, and the proper craft of singing, so that right away, when we start our rehearsals, we're going in with the singers, the, the musicians are going into it with the barbershop craft in mind, instead of just like la 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 la, and then going in and saying, now apply the barbershop craft. Why don't we do that in our vocal skill building sessions? And we call them vocal skill building sessions. So we put those two things together. So what I'd like to do is take what we're doing for an hour and a half after lunch and put it together with uh, warm-up exercises and principles behind them because there are there are physical things that we need to do uh, you know posture breathing resonation phonation all that stuff is some basic vocal stuff but at the same time we can build in the barbershop craft as we're teaching those things so what I'd like to do is go through some vocal warm-ups that and the way that we approach the vocal warm-ups into a skill building session instead so that might leave us some time during understanding, identifying, and teaching vocal craft to do part one of what's the song about, helpful tips and appropriate interpretation, and message delivery that's going to be later on in the afternoon. Or on Sunday, I should say. Yeah. This one goes down. Right? Yeah. So we can do a little bit of that because that's a really huge subject and there's only an hour and a half for that on Sunday. But as, I'd like to do some of that today because as we work with the chorus on individual directing and coaching, I think that that's really important to already have an idea of how we as directors want to use what we do in order to evoke that emotional response. So if we don't have some sort of a, a class on that previously, then, you know, then it's kind of like teaching it twice but backwards, right? So I, I'd like to kind of switch that up a bit if that's okay with everybody. Fine. Excellent. Okay, so warm-up exercises and principles behind them and understanding, identifying, and teaching vocal craft. Let's put those two things together. So uh, maybe we can stand up. I'll treat you as if you are my chorus. I'm not uh, quite uh, good at English. So. Okay, if you have a question. Yeah. yeah. And can you talk a little bit slow? slow. <laughs> I not that slow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've got people in my course that uh, aren't so good at English and I disregard them. It <laughs> doesn't yeah. matter, they, they have to catch up. You know, but I'll, I'll slow it down a little. I get very passionate and excited about the subject, but if, you, if anybody has a question, just raise your hand, okay? Um, and then I'll translate it into Swedish for you. Ja, jag vet så att jag kommer att prata svensk om det man skulle förstå det. Hej allihopa! Allihopa! I'll teach you some good Swedish. Allihopa means everybody, all together. It's what you say after, you know, when you isolate the lead section. And then everybody wants to sing. You say, Ali Hoopa. Stand up again. Um, okay, so the first thing that I will do is I will go through posture and why it's important and explain why it's important. Uh, so we want our feet facing the shoulder width apart. And, and some people say, put one foot forward. I don't. When you do this, you alter where your hips are, which is something you don't want to do. So I say, shoulder width apart feet forward. Now if you rock forward, you can feel that you're using a lot of muscle in your legs and your lower legs, which you want to use. Keep those muscles engaged, rock all the way backward, and you can feel how you're using muscles in the back of your body, around your butt. Now put them right in the center and use both sets of muscles down the front and down the back and balance those muscles. Now you can feel your legs are grounded. 
that's what you want to do. Now you want to make sure your hips are over top of the center of your feet. Your knees slightly flexed. And you know, usually they say bend your knees, but you don't have to bend your knees if you're rolling your pelvis just slightly forward. Now you don't want to push your pelvis forward because then you'll you'll feel that you're not balancing your weight in your legs. You want to keep the balance in your legs and just roll the pelvis slightly so that it's flat at the back right here. Now, I'll explain why. Now, try and straighten your legs. Okay? Now, try and breathe properly by releasing all of the muscles here and letting this fall forward. Can you feel the pull right here in the oblique abdominal muscles? Now, just roll your pelvis slightly forward, flatten this. So these, these bones here are not digging into the thoracic cavity. Okay, now relax this. See how easy that is? That's why you want your knees slightly bent. And the way to bend your knees slightly is just by rolling the pelvis. Because it's really hard to roll the pelvis. And just try rolling the pelvis and straightening the legs. No, it's impossible. No, it doesn't work, right? And it still pulls. So roll the pelvis slightly. Keep the weight up the front muscles and down the back muscles, and then this is free to move. Okay? So this is what you want. Then you want the spine to be as long as possible. The discs in between the spine, in between the vertebrae, you want to feel like they're as big as marshmallows. All the way up. It's a, it's a good visual, isn't it? As big as marshmallows, all the way up. Can you feel that you're taller? Now when you focus on the vertebrae being, the space between the vertebrae being bigger, you don't have tension in your shoulders. When you try and stand tall, you have tension in your shoulders. So just focus on the vertebrae having marshmallows in between, and then your shoulders are relaxed. Now you want to make sure that your ears, your shoulders actually, are over top of your hips. Not by doing this, but by letting them hang and making sure the muscles in the front and the muscles in the back are balanced. Then you make sure that your ears, if you can, are over top of your shoulders. Some people cannot do that. And they do this or this. But you don't want that either. You want the top of the roof of your mouth to be parallel with the floor, not the bottom, because when the jaw hangs, they're going to do this. The top of the roof of the mouth ears over the shoulders. <clears throat> that creates length here. And inside here, in the in the pharynx, nasopharynx, oropharynx area, that's what it's called. That's where we resonate our sound. And you can check this easily by going like this and saying, ah, ah, ah. now, ah. 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 Okay, so you've heard the difference, right? Now some people will go, like this and try to and make this tense. You want to keep that relaxed. If it's like this, you're compressing here to do this. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Always long. Tall, tall, tall. As tall as possible, right there. And then the roof of the mouth. Ah, 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 ah. Now, your hands. Let me just explain something about the shoulders. Now the shoulders are relaxed. A lot of people. You know, they stand with their hands like this, which caves in the chest. We want the chest to be open and wide, so just take your little fingers and just put those on the seams with your pants. Just like that. And you can see how that's open. If that, do, if that visual doesn't work for you, as directors, I always tell directors to direct from their angel wings. So imagine you've got giant angel wings, and they're touching the floor. They're huge, beautiful wings, any color you want. Any color you want. <laughs> and that they're touching the floor, and you can feel the openness here. And also as directors, back here, there's muscles in here between the shoulder blades, wrong, uh, wrong, rhomboid muscles here, and these muscles are responsible for a lot of your directing skill and a lot of your posture. If you're trying to pull back your, from here, you're using muscle. That's going to be in the way of your, your freedom and flexibility as a director. If you focus on these muscles, pulling the shoulder blades together from these muscles, 
you can see how relaxed your shoulders are. Now, how much up, how much room and, and, and uh, relaxation have you got to move your arms when you're directing? Lots. But if you try to do it from here, your, your directing will be stiff and awkward. So those muscles that, imagine there's a little elastic right here. And that works for your singers as well. So, you know, what's good for you is good for them. You mirror what you want them to do. If you want them to be relaxed in their vocal production, you have to be relaxed in your body when you're directing. If you get stiff or go, how many directors here go, when they start a song, or when they cut off a song, or a phrase ending like this. Yeah. That's what the singer, whether they know it or not, is going to do. They're going to do it too. So the more you can just be like, I own this song, I own this phrase ending, I own this onset, I own this, I own it from the angel wings, the more they're going to stand like this, I own this song, I own this phrase ending, etc., etc. So posture is a huge, huge part of what we do as singers, but also as directors, because we mirror to them what we want them to do. And I know so many directors are, they're not doing their phrase endings, or they're losing energy, and I don't know why, you know, they're losing energy, just, you know, and they, they direct harder, as if that's going to make a difference. But then the singer's going, ah, you know, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to do what we tell them to do. They really will. The smallest thing, you know, they'll, they'll do it. There's a difference between opening a phrase like this or opening a phrase like that. You will get different kinds of sound from the chorus if you open your elbows first, or if you open your hands first, or if you do this, <coughs> that, or this. If you do this, and then do that, you're going to get a build in the phrase. And you don't have to like, you know, you don't have to do that. This, and we'll, we'll demonstrate this later with the chorus. So, and that doesn't come from this. That won't do it. This. Automatically, the chorus will go, you're in charge. I will do what you will do. They want to surrender to whatever it is you do. If you try to make them do it, They'll try to make you hear it, and that will lose musicality. Okay, so posture, 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 posture is, I'd say, you know, 75% of what you're doing. Okay, now breathing. We've got our open space. Breathing um, is very low in the body. It's lower than we think. A lot of people think it's just let this go, and then when you're about to start a phrase, you engage it. But that's too hard. That engagement is too hard. Uh, 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 and it, for, it causes forced sound, pushed sound. And that's not what we want. We want balanced onset. There are three kinds of onset. There's soft onset. Onset is when the vocal cords come together. Okay? So soft onset is uh, Hard onset is uh, And balanced onset is uh, you can feel them coming gently together, but they're coming together. So those are the three kinds of onset. Now different singers in your group will have different issues with onset, but all of your exercises that you do should be geared towards having balanced onset, especially breathing exercises. So if you're doing exercises that are like, uh, and practicing hard onset, that's not what you want. And you can say, put a tiny H on front of it, it'll help. Can iemand met Nederlands woord voor onset? Onset. 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 Onset.
if people are having a hard time with it, and every individual singer, and I mean every individual singer, has an individual approach to balance mm -hmm. onset. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to identify all the time different words, different vowels will cause different onsets. So you need to identify each singer and if they have an issue. A lot of them are uh, 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 and it could be very subtle, but that's hard onset. <coughs> There's a time for that glot, is also called glottal. Yeah. There's a time for that for effect, like if you're singing, um, if I ever love again, if I love again, if I love again, which is smooth, if I love again, if I love again, just to separate that, to give it an emotional thing, then you use a little bit of glottal, but that's because you asked for it. Yeah. Not because they're, if I love again, how many people here have singers that are singing choppy? <laughs> And a lot of it has to do with the jaw, the tongue, and the heart onset. So all of the exercises that I'm going to go through today will be about how to eliminate those things. But you need to explain to them that that's what you're doing. So that they know. They're, you need to teach them to be more intelligent and independent as singers. The more information you can give them on why and what kind of a difference it makes for them specifically, and the more they can have the experience of, Aha! Aha! I've achieved this. The more inspired they will get to continue to achieve their best level, their next best level, is what you're teaching to. So when we're doing, uh, often when we're doing warm-ups, we forget that we can't teach to the entire group the same thing, because every individual has something different that they're doing. But some exercises will help everybody, okay? So breathing, let's just talk about breathing for a second. Um, if there are, there are <coughs> muscles in the pelvic girdle down here, and I mean down there if you know what I'm saying, that are uh, muscles in the pelvic floor. And those muscles are really responsible for a lot of strong breathing technique. If you breathe higher, uh, 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 it's harder to control. If you breathe lower, uh, uh, it's easier to control. So these we call, in my course, we call these the flipper. So <laughs> try your best. <laughs> okay. Flipper, yeah. For, for men, um, the best way to say is imagine them coming up. <laughs> Back to puberty, okay? And for women, you imagine basically muscles on either side of the lips coming together and raising every time you exhale. When you inhale, you release those muscles. Uh, so, uh, let's pick that note instead. So, let's release these. Got your posture. Let's release these. Breathe in. And engage them. Uh, Singing, 
choppy singing, right? Yeah. Do you hear the difference? Yeah. And it is small, and a lot of people will go, I don't feel it, I don't feel it. You've got to find some way that they can feel it. So I, I always, you know, make them do this, just kinesthetically, mm -hmm. I make them open. And some people will go open, and then they'll forget on a breath to, to open and forget on a phrase to do this. It will take them a while to get the coordination that you need. But keep working on it, keep working on it, keep working on it. So every vocal exercise you do, they have to do this. They must do this with their hands. And if they stop doing it with their hands, you go to that person and you say, do this. Because in their head, what they've decided is, I understand this, I don't need to do this. But the thing is, next week, their brain will have forgotten this, but their mind will think that they understand it. As adult learners, we understand, but it takes a long time for this to go to this, and to go to automatic behavior. It, you must drill to kill, as I call it. Repeat, 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 until it becomes an automatic working part of every <coughs> phrase. If they think they've got it, you just ask them, are you doing it on every breath in our up tune that goes like this? Are you? Can they honestly say that? Probably not. Probably not. So we want to make it so automatic that during a, you know, Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Give me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. If you were cheap, you know, it's got to be, it's got to be that automatic and that quick. Those muscles can move very quickly. Even though they are slow twitch muscles, they're called. Like the ribs are slow twitch muscles if you have people that are breathing. Those are slower than these. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me. Then you'll be left alone. So these are very slow, these muscles, the, the uh, intercostal muscles, they're called in the ribs. Now, if, if they're practicing bringing these together, it's really hard, hard to breathe with the ribs. Just try it. Bring those muscles together. With the, bring these together with the muscles in the back. And now try and breathe. <laughs> It's, the thing about it, it's hard to collapse your ribs when you're doing this. Mm -hmm. You can raise your ribs when you're doing it, but it's really hard to... Uh, you got to work to collapse your ribs when you're using these muscles to keep your shoulders relaxed and your rib cage open. So if you can explain to them why all these things are connected, then they'll go, oh, oh, that's why it's important. Not because you told me to bend my knees or breathe low. It's like, you know, people that are complaining about losing breath in a phrase, if they're not doing this, you, you can walk up to them and say, do it or stop complaining. Do it or your misery cheerfully refunded. You can have all your misery back if you don't do it. Good morning. Sorry, I'm kind of late. Come in. There's a chair over there. Hi. Hey, oh, yeah. So, all of these things, posture-wise, are connected to your breathing, right? Now, I want you to stand with your knees locked, knees straight, and I want you to try to use flippers. So, let's do that. So, we want to breathe open. How open did that get? Yeah, now try and engage it and go, ah, ah, ah right? Ah, right? How much control do you have? You have no control over the tone. No, none at all. Because you have no control over exhalation. So it's all very connected. Breathing and posture, breathing and posture. So every single exercise that you do needs to be based on breathing and posture and you need to reinforce breathing and posture on every exercise you do. That's how they're going to sing better in the song. By having automatic posture, by knowing even if they're doing choreo, when they come back to, to center, they know exactly what center feels like. They know exactly where home feels. This is home. That's a move. This is home.
It's going to help. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to help the choreo as well. They're going to have more strength in their body when they're doing this to try and keep all of that in line as much as possible. <coughs> it's going to help them have more ah uh, strength. If I'm ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, uh, right. So core strength core strength and lots of balance in the front muscles and the back muscles of the legs. That's going to ground the lower body. When the lower body is grounded, it's much easier to use this. No grounding in the lower body. And on risers, in the front row people have it a little differently, but on risers, people think from the waist up. Because that's all they think people can see. And they do all their choreo from here instead of from here. <coughs> And you, right away you can see the difference in the strength in my body. If I do it from the, the top up, it's going to be slow and out of sync. If I do it from the bottom, you can see more strength in the arms, more strength in the entire body. So getting our grounded feel from the pelvis down. Nice and tall up here. Lots of resonant space. And get them to know where home is. So they can always, always come back and readjust themselves throughout a song. This way you'll also have more stamina throughout your songs. People usually run out of stamina because they run out of they run out of putting their strength in their body throughout the song and they 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 get tired and they start doing you know things like this and the sound caves in. But if you can train them to keep that no matter what, even if they have to mime going through the song all the way through with choreo, all the choreo moves, and focus only on coming back to home and knowing how to readjust when they take a breath <clears throat> and focus on that. The song, without singing a note, the song will improve a lot. Mm -hmm. Without singing a note. Mm -hmm. So play a good recording of the song and get them to do everything but focus only on the core strength. Mm -hmm. And then, work in small portions of the song in order to reinforce that. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's go back to vocal warm-ups. So, some vocal warm-ups, the first thing I will start is on a middle, middle high note. <coughs> and I will get them to hum. <coughs> and as they're humming, keep humming, I will ask them to breathe here all the time whenever they need to and make sure they have balance Cuff, 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 you can say with an open. Cuff, cuff, cuff. 
instead of lowering the palate to make cup raise the tongue to the lifted palate. Same with g, Dixie, for instance. Dixie. I, I can't hear you. I'm losing you. I can't. And see what happens to the abel. I can't. So the, the word believe, if you have a B following uh, before an E, your E will be short if you close your mouth from B. The problem isn't the E, it's the B. So you need to go through your music and look at these and then incorporate these words into your exercises instead of going, La 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 da 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 ba 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 na 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 ma 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 pa 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 so all of these these consonants ta 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 so they can keep as much space. Ta, 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 ta. Ta can be open. S can be open. S s Have you got people in your group that go s too, too much S? Yeah. Kissing. Yeah. Open. It almost sounds a little bit like a lisp, but it comes out as S. If you've got like 30 people going, that's all you're going to hear. I have this problem with Swedes who really like their S's a lot. We will never sing a song called On the Mississippi. <laughs> never. In the ballad that uh, we're singing right now, there's a, or in the uptune, there's the word kissing. Kiss, kiss. They really like to go yeah. right to the S, and they miss the E, but the problem is that they're closing their palate. Kiss, kiss, kiss. And it comes out this way. Kiss, if they open the palate and bring the tongue up. They put the H after the K. Yeah, if they put the K up into the palate, kissing, the, the eye will come up. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so all of the things that we do in our vocal warm ups would really work with my group. It might work with your group depending on what songs you're singing as well, but you need to go through your music and circle some of the traps and go, this week we're going to do kick a kick, or you can do it on a maybe my moment, maybe my moment, you know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's a, you'll, somebody will teach you. It's, a, it's an exercise. Mm -hmm. Maybe oh, my moment, maybe my moment, maybe my moment, I started that a little low. Um, but you can go ka 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 ka, or, or take some line from your song. Can't believe I'm kissing you, <laughs> or whatever you know. Can't believe it's true. Can't be. There's a B. Believe. There's an L. a couple of days ago and it's a little kid at the stove and it's a piano teacher saying we're going to keep working on the stove until you get those staccato notes, notes right. <laughs> yeah, right. I've also got one of Mozart as a little child and it's, it's, it's got an F flat and his father's saying don't take that tone with me young man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, t, t, always open up, and it's the same with every phrase ending as well. Can't believe I'm losing you, you, closing down the ooh vowel, you, ooh, ooh, people like to close down ooh, ooh, sing O oh for me. Oh, oh, that the job. Oh, Let me see some teeth. Oh, Did you hear the difference right away? Oh, Do it again, sing the old way. Oh, New way. Oh, right. Did you hear how instantly 
our resonation locked. We sounded like one voice. I call this guppy. Oh, like a fish. You know? Oh, space. And everything should be based on that space. I call this also the vowel pipe. It's oval in shape. It's this shape, not a circle. Because then you get, uh, it's too wide. Uh, you need a tall A as in la, la. Can you hear the difference? Yeah. La. but full, <clears throat> not wide, all the vowels. So when you're teaching people that are not native English speakers, <coughs> it's actually a bit of a benefit. No. No? No? no. Somebody was waving at me and oh. I was stupid enough to wave back. So <laughs> <laughs> that was spontaneous. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's yes. not a problem. I just need to check where I'm at. Okay, we got time. Good. Um, so I would go la 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 and, and at the end of the word land is an N D, right? So you need to keep that land N and D are in the same spot. Land land so the first L open. Land. Now turn that wide. and then you're building vocal skill building and warming up the voice and warming up the mind for the barbershop <coughs> art form, right? So let's just go over a few, uh, few warm-ups that you can add these into. Um, the first one I would say was, would be to take a line from the song, a specific part that you're having trouble with, <coughs> that it's not flowing, and then Examine with the chorus why it's not working and tell them, you know, that oh, the L isn't working or the ND isn't working. Land I love, land I love, land I love. All with the open, open uh, space. You don't need to close it for any of those words. Land I love. And when they realize, oh, right. It's the start of them understanding what they need to do in order to keep tone flow happening, to get away from choppy singing, because usually we're overusing our jaw, we're over-articulating. Land I love, land I love, land I love, land I love. Then you get your legato phrasing happening. So go through your music. Pick the traps, the big ones where it's falling apart. <coughs> Use those lyrics in land I love so that they can stay in the vowel pipe, keep the space open. Okay, now there's one more thing about space that you can use in order to get more resonance during vocal warm ups. Land I love is all kind of right here. If I want, broader sound. I always teach, because um, I fly a lot, I always watch these, you know, safety things with the, you know, you know, go in the pipe, the light goes on in the water, you know, all of that. But the one that fascinates me the most and works with singers really, really well is the oxygen mask. I've often wondered when it drops down, they say, when it drops down, just place it over if the bag doesn't inflate, don't worry about it. And I'm thinking, why do they put a bag there? Because I'm going to be going, why isn't the bag inflating? I'm going to panic. But they always say, if the bag doesn't inflate, it's okay. 
And I'm thinking, once you've stopped screaming, place it over your head, and you know. Um, so the uh, yeah. Um, so what they do is they have this elastic. They put their hand through it. They hold the mask and they stretch it, and they try not to mess up their hair. <laughs> myself, this is an excellent tool for people because everybody will understand this. This is the vowel pipe. It's also a place where you can put your resonance. So instead of telling a singer, you need more forward resonance, pull it forward because they'll just use muscle to make it happen. You never want them to do that. Fool them into doing it by saying, just put your sound right there in that vowel pipe. All your vowels should fit right there. Draw this back. This will give you more resonant space. Right? Now there's another trick to this. If they breathe to the palm of the hand, they're breathing to their highest space. If they don't, you can hear the subtle difference. Now, they can breathe up here at the end of every phrase if they draw this back and let the breath come up here on every breath and then start the next phrase from the back of the hand. <laughs> I know it, it's, it's, it seems very pedantic, but the difference is land and land. Can you hear that? Let's try it, okay? Let's breathe up into here first. And then just start the phrase here, okay? Ready? Let's choose that note. So we're breathing up here, and we're going to start the phrase on the on the palm, okay? Not bad. Now let's breathe up there, but start the phrase from back here. Are you ready?
So I've given you, so far, I've given you how to deal with consonants. You have to put as much space and air behind consonants as you do behind vowels. Okay? You have to rehearse breaths. Lifting out of the breath with space, not with pressure. Land. How many get phrase endings that way? Land. Land. That's expanse. So once you've got this, then you can add this to it as well. So you can add three dimensions. I, I think of this as like one of the great pyramids of Egypt, tipped over on its side. So you get that space, but you get that ring. La, la. Now a lot of your singers will also try to make more space by pressing down on the back of their tongue. This is something that should be avoided at all costs. It is it creates nothing but tension. La, la. You want them to lift up and think wide in the sound, but not la. Especially basses. Yeah. On low notes. La, la, la. They think that sounds lower or more bass-like, but it doesn't sound like anything. La. As a matter of fact, the lower a bass sings, the more frontal presence they need. La. So you want that backspace for a bass, but you want those lower notes to have brighter quality to them. So one of the things that I work on when anybody's in their lowest space, and that's when baritones are at the lowest level, or the leads are at their lowest level, or the tenors even, when they come down into a blended area, they try to bring their upper register down a little too low. So you don't want that either. You want that, that nice blended space that's matched at all times. So one of the things, especially that I, I tell, I tell people that are in the lower parts of the register that we want more twang in the sound. If you tell them we want more frontal resonance, they'll try to push it this way. But if you say, just talk about here from Texas, yeehaw, and get them to go, yeehaw, now sing that note, and it's going to be right where you want it. So, yeehaw. You can also use na 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 yeah, that's good. I, I tend to tense up here a little bit when I do this. Yeah, the other thing you can do is do uh, meow, 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 like a cat. Meow, 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 and sometimes I'll get my course to do like a cat fight. Meow. But focus on lifting, keeping it open, but still going meow, meow, meow. And then you get the note you want. Yeah. So that's another way to do it. Yeah. Mm. So especially on low notes or on dark vowels like a, o, a, as in ug, those ones, those three especially, a, <laughs> you want it balanced. Just like we have balanced onset, you want balanced placement. Uh, 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 I can't believe I'm losing you. Now you've got all these different vowel sounds that are like one of those. Yeah. You know, exactly. And yeah. 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 the audience hears yeah. 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 you ha, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's too much. You want them to feel that balanced sound all the time, that painted, like there's a piece of glass with all these colors and you can finger paint all over them, but your fingers never leave the glass. That's like your sound. I can't believe I'm losing you. I can't believe I'm losing you. You want that ring to stay there. I can't believe I'm losing you. It's all, yeah. yeah, exactly. Right? So that's a good visual for some people, you know, the finger painting visual or the this. I can't believe I'm losing you. Keeping it all in the pipe. Now, if you want, if you want really spiky sound, Imagine a swordfish coming through the pipe. I can't be, I can uh, uh, uh. And that helps people think forward without trying to make it happen. They just do it. 
So these are things you can build in to your, uh, your warm-ups. Again, you know, every single warm-up that you have, you have your specific ones that you do in your choruses. But approach them this way, and they will be much more effective. So we've worked with posture. We've worked with resonant tone. We've worked with, especially, relaxation of the shoulders and the upper body. We've worked with breathing. And we've worked with articulation. Articulation, phonation, breathing, posture. Enunciation is different than articulation. Enunciation is how clearly, uh, not how clearly, but how you pronounce the words. But we've worked with that, with keeping the vowels tall. And then the articulation comes mostly from the lips and the tongue. Ah, uh, I can believe I'm losing. losing you. Now, when you have these consonants that you have to close down on, put those consonants at the beginning of the next word so that the vowel stays open. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't, I can't believe I'm losing, losing you, losing, losing you, losing you. See the difference? All right. It, it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over. Can you hear the difference? Yeah, so vowels are where we express the emotion of the song, and consonants are what tell us what the story is. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. May I ask you something? Is there no difference between up tempo and bass? No. No, same rules apply. In a ballad, you have actually a little bit more flexibility to say things like, um, um, let's see, um, it's really hard to think with that. Yeah. Oh! In the background. Think all your Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you're singing like, um, uh, you are much too close to mine. You've got uh, opportunity to close down the R a little bit for effect. Your lips is too clinical. It's a little longer on the L. And how often do we hear barbershop groups sing, this is the vowel, this is the da, 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 da. But in a ballad, See, the breath now is going to be very important. See, it drops. Your lips are ah. It's an ah vowel, and it's a lower note, and it's right after a breath. So you're going to be. Ex well, the choruses are, are uh, wondering uh, if you can start with the chorus. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot the yeah. chorus part. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll go right after this one thing. To go. Okay. Yeah. So I forgot there was a chorus involved in this. Okay. My bad. It says right here. Yeah. We're having so much fun. So if I go. How, how low is, that's a lower note, it's an ah vowel, and I didn't lift the phrase before, and I didn't breathe on the open space. So it's going to come in, are uh, much too close to mine, but if I do all those things we talked about, your lips are much too close to mine, beware my foolish heart, but should so you see, it, it has potential to build, 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 build. Your or it's your lips are much too close to mine. Beware my foolish heart, but should and it's just like oh my god, you know, you're just dragging it, yeah. and the poor director, you're like, come on. <laughs> 
So you can, you can alleviate a lot of anxiety as a director by building these skills into, like you could use, if that's your song, you could use this phrase on, maybe my mama, beware my foolish heart. So they're working on tuning of basic chords, one, five, okay? Beware my foolish heart. And get them to do that over and over again on just that exercise. And then when you come to do it in the song, their body's going, I want to do that thing. And then all you have to do is remind them instead of make them. You can't make them do anything they don't really understand or feel in their body. It's not going to happen. So you've got to find ways to help them feel it. And I think local skill building is going to be the way to do it. Let's try some of this on them.